Amen. Ooh, I like that. That's nice. That's a red, that's a red mic. Nice. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word today, God. We ask that you touch us in a mighty way. You strengthen our marriages, strengthen our single people, strengthen our relationship with you, God. It doesn't happen without you, Jesus. I just thank you, God. And I bless you. So, God, as I minister today, I minister to the married couples. Prophetess will minister, God, to the singles. And God, we just thank you. And we bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, first of all, the song kind of reminded me of can we walk together? Can two walk together except they be agreed? Amen. So that's Amos 3 and 3. Um, I, I felt that in the spirit that uh, you can't get to the mountaintop if you're always picking somebody, pulling, 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 pulling somebody to go with you. You got to walk it together. You got to climb together. You need each other to climb higher. And, and sometimes we forget that uh, in order to go higher in your marriage and to go higher in your relationship, you need help. And that help comes from one another. Amen? So just, uh, just be reminded of that. that. That wasn't part of my message today. That, that was just a, a bonus because of the song. And, and God showed that to me as, the minister, as she was singing in the ministry. So praise God for uh, Sister Jessica. Amen? I mean, go with me to the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and uh, I will read it from the King James. King James happens to be much shorter uh, in text than the Message Bible, which you'll be reading together later. Uh, now, uh, 1 Corinthians 7, uh, the title of my portion of this message is, Get Yourself a Rockstar Marriage. <laughs> Get Yourself a Rockstar Marriage. Whether you're married or not, this will work for everybody. Get yourself a rock star marriage. I believe that God sometimes wants to deal in, uh, he wants to show you off. You know, these, a lot of these rock stars, they're out there, they're being showed off to the world. But how about if God could take your marriage and show yours off? So I believe there's a time and a season that you can get up a rock star marriage. Look to your neighbor and say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have a rock star marriage. I already have one, so I'm praising, I'm praising the Lord already in advance, but I'm going to have a rock star marriage. Just tell them I'm going to have a rock star marriage. Uh, there's a couple of things that uh, God had showed to me uh, over the times, over this 21 years, that have been effective in delivering rock star status to our marriage. I'm just talking about my wife and me. I'm not worried about y'all, but I, I know for a fact that uh, I can show off our marriage and, and, and you will see 99.9% .9 great things and maybe 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0000001 of a bad thing. It'll, ha it'll show itself every now and then, but because of all the experiences, you can't even find it. Amen? You know, every now, let me just tell you, it's... it's not everything is perfect. We wouldn't need Jesus if it was. But thank God for Jesus. <laughs> he, he cleans up my blemishes. Amen. So 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Uh, there's some uh, going on, but that's okay. 1 Corinthians 7. Now concerning the things where you wrote unto me, it's a good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornica fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Let me just help y'all out. <laughs> it says, uh, uh, the, the writer, Paul, saying, uh, you know, it's good that you, uh, you don't touch a woman or a woman don't touch a man, but if you have to go get married, and if you can't control yourself, at least go get married. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence and likewise unto the wife, unto the husband. Uh, uh, let me just help y'all out again. Do benevolence is the cookie jar. I'm just telling you what the word says. Every now and then you got to open the cookie jar because if not, he going to get his cookies. Now I'm just being real. That's what the word is. This is not me saying it. This is my brother Paul. Paul wrote this from prison. He didn't understand. He wrote this to the Corinthian church because the Corinthian church had been through some stuff. The Corinthian church had been into uh, uh, sex with her uncles and, and stuff like that. So he's writing from experience. He found the church, but he wanted the church to understand that just because uh, you're, you're blowing up, you're getting larger, don't mean you come up with some problems. So here's some ways I can fix that. And here's the things that you're going to deal with. First thing you got to do is stop acting crazy. 
You cannot put your, 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 your husband on an intimacy strike forever and think he's not going to find that fishy. It's not me, it's a word. Verse 4, I just got quiet, so I appreciate that. Y'all, y'all married women just said, man, why is he beating up on me? I'm not beating on you. <laughs> it says, likewise, also wife unto the husband. Say, husband, render unto the wife due benevolence. Who's he admonishing first? The husband. Mm. But in this day and age, unfortunately, these husbands, they want it every day, right? You know, women say, man, well, I got to be this one. I got y'all. I got y'all back. Don't worry. The wife has not power of her own body, but the husband. Likewise, also the husband has not power of his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not the other, except it be consent of a time. It means y'all need to agree. If y'all not going to have some intimacy, y'all need to agree in a, in, a, in a season. Amen? That you may give yourselves to fasting and praying. If you agree not to have intimacy, it better be some fasting and some praying going along. And come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incontinuancy. Incont incont but I speak this by permission and not by command. For I would that all men were even as myself, but every man hath proper gift of God, one after another, and uh, another after that. I say, therefore, to be unmet to the unmarried and to the widow is good for them if they uh, abide even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it's better to marry than to burn. And unto the married I command ye not, I, I but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. Uh, if you have a separation, the separation is for a season, not forever. This is what the text is saying. This is not me. This is, uh, this is when, you, uh, when you're having situations in your marriage that need some working out, and you cannot live in the same place. You have to understand you have to be separated for a season. That doesn't, uh, that doesn't mean go have sex with other people, go date with other people. That's just a separation for a season. Amen. It says, and then come back and reconcile. Realize that, you, that you have, your things are fixed and get it right. Amen? But to the rest, speak I not the Lord. If any brethren have a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which has a husband that believeth not, and if he please to dwell with her, let her not leave him. What he's saying is, uh, if they're non-believers and you marry them, you stuck with them. Y'all got quiet. <laughs> if you chose that unrighteous man or that unrighteous woman, you can't throw them away and get you another one. You stuck with them. You bought them, you buy them. You broke them, you bought them, you buy them. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You ever go in the store, you knock something down, that's yours. It was broke when you got it. Yes, it was, but now you got it. I'm just telling you, again, don't shoot me. This is the word. I am just the mouthpiece for the season. Don't get, look at this preacher up there talking about, got us hold on to this marriage. If you, if you signed up for that, that signed up was for better or for worse. Yeah. You just got the worse. And you need to pray for the better. Amen. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us to peace. For what knowest thou, O, we o wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband, or knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save the wife? But as God has distributed to every man, as the Lord hath called everyone, so let him walk. And so ordained I all churches. Is, uh, I'm going to stop right there just for a second, uh, just because I want to give you my, uh, my uh, points that God has showed me. Uh, I have a few good points that God had really uh, ministered to me uh, over the, this weekend. I've been working on this, and, uh, and really, I didn't know exactly how God was going to take me, and he took me in a place that I said, man, that's a good place. I had, to, I, had to, I had to turn around yesterday while we were out and about, and I just said, 
Prophet is a, is a good choice. I, I fought it. You know, I like to go. Y'all know me, right? I like to go. And for my, for, for my anniversary weekend, I very rarely want to be in town. I want to go out of town. But Prophetess was, was said she wanted to stay in town. She wanted to be close. She said we could do something else. So I kind of gave in, and, and I was going to teach her a lesson. <laughs> and she taught me a lesson. And that lesson was sometimes you better listen to your wife because she's right. You know, I, enjoy, I really enjoyed this. It was nice. It was peaceful. We didn't, have to, uh, we didn't have to get on a plane. We didn't have to pack and unpack. We didn't have to rent a car. We didn't have to do all these things that you got to do when you go out of town. Um, and we just was able to jump out and go. And if we decided to go somewhere else, we just go. We didn't, have to, we didn't have to go get a map. We didn't need a GPS. We just went. Amen? Amen. Sometimes you got to recognize that la the last time we did that was probably five, six, seven years ago. We invited the couples to go stay with us at the Chateau Avalon, I think, was the last time we actually stayed in town. Uh, but this was wonderful. So I really enjoyed it. But let me give you these points. Look to your neighbor and say, I'm going to have a rock star marriage. First one, the, and this one is uh, real uh, simple. It's a real simple. And um, I don't know, if ha I don't know if, how many people have uh, been observing here recently. Have you observed me recently and there's been a change on, on some of the things I wear? What, what, what am I wearing differently? This green band has been, this ugly green band has been on my wrist since November, right? Nobody's noticed. Nobody said anything about it. They, I, I don't wear uh, all these long sleeve shirts. I wear polo shirts. But the band says, water the bamboo. Water the bamboo. And bamboo is real unique, and I'm going to relate it to your marriage in a minute. Uh, uh, bamboo food, uh, is, it grows funny. You can water it the first week and it'll never grow. You wrote it the second week and it'll never grow. Water it and it'll never grow. Water it the fourth week, it'll grow 30 feet. Water it the fifth week, it'll grow 100 yards. But if you had looked at the bamboo at week one, you could have gave up. But if you'd have watered the, the bamboo at week two, you could have gave up. But if you keep watering the bamboo, you keep giving in to being a farmer for your marriage, and you keep watering your marriage, you keep praying over your marriage, you, keep, you might not see the results on your spouse the first week or, or the second week or the first year or the second year. You might not be able to see the results on yourself the first year or the second year. But after a while, if you keep praying, you keep speaking word over it, you keep watering it, you keep building it up, you keep making it, uh, event eventually it's going to grow to something special. And bamboo, bamboo is a unique, uh, a unique product because it is pliable. In a marriage, as strong as bamboo is, it is very pliable. There's a, there's a store in the Caribbean that sells bamboo clothing. The bamboo clothing, it never wrinkles, never, uh, it never um, shrinks but very strong and sturdy, and it wicks away sweat. So even when you're working hard on your marriage, no sweat off your back. Water the bamboo. Whenever you think it's going bad in your marriage or you don't see any growth in your marriage, just remind yourself to water the bamboo. Get you a Bible out. Get you a prayer when you're watering that bamboo, you don't do it from the top. You do it from the bottom. That means you have to get down on your knees to water it. We want to do it from on high. You can't do it from on high. You, because uh, bamboos sit in the rainforest, they don't grow because of the rain. They grow because of the soil. Water the bamboo. Four things that I want to talk to you about your marriage. 
I'm not saying for you to go get a, a, a wristband that says water bamboo. I'm just telling you these four things. I'm going to tell you about your marriage. <laughs> looks, looks in there and say rock star marriage. Four things to stay connected to your marriage. Initiate continuous reinvention. The reason why our marriage works for 21 years and it's going to work for another 21 years plus, plus, plus is because we never stay the same. We always continue to reinvent our marriage. We continue to do different things. We continue to, to try different things. We continue to uh, venture out and be uh, creative. Even when, we, even when it seems like we're doing the same thing, we do it creatively different. The best thing about uh, continuous reinvention is it doesn't cost anything. Sometimes you have to be creative in your presentation. If she comes in the house and you complain and as soon as she comes in, <laughs> change it. Stop complaining. Start adding to the blessing. She had, she had a rough day at work, let her know you appreciated her. You had a, uh, the husband had a rough day at work, let, her, let, you, let him know that you appreciate him. Continuous re reinvention. Provide, this is part one, still part of part one. You provide compelling insight. That means when you, when you, when you can tell there's something going on, give insight to what's going on. Be a part of the solution, not a part of the problem. If she or he comes in and just starts talking about what, how bad or how strong that day was, don't ignore them. Love them. Amen? Customize your marriage. I appreciate how much y'all love our marriage, but y'all can't be us. We, it took 21 years to get where we at. <laughs> Y'all can't just pop up and say, well, that's my marriage right there. I'm going to be just like them. No. If, you start, if, I hear you, if I see you start wearing a hair in a bun and you start looking at, and, and, and your husband start wearing three-piece suits with a, with a pocket square and y'all let's see it, I'm going to have a talk with y'all because that's y'all that y'all marriage has got to be different than my marriage. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong. <laughs> there's no If we went on a date to this place on Friday and then all of a sudden you're doing it on Saturday, I'm going to check y'all. <laughs> because that's my marriage. It's not your marriage. Your marriage is still, y'all, we like, we might like Barry White. Y'all might like uh, uh, Hootie and the Blowfish. I don't know. That's y'all marriage. <laughs> there is Rucker One Country, which, by the way, which is very good. Uh, uh, but what I'm saying is, you have to be, have to have some customization, right? What, what works for one person is not going to work for you. And, and, and uh, for single people, this is specifically for single people right now, when you're looking for a spouse, you've got to look different than the next person. You've got to act different than the next person. You have to be different than the next person. Ain't nobody going to try and find you if, you if the neighbor next to you looks just like you. You've got to make yourself special. So I got a rock star marriage. Yeah. Point number two. It's the experience. Rock star marriages understand it's about the experience. Look to your neighbor and say it's about the experience. What am I saying? Pre preacher, what are you saying? When there's disagreements, you're not disagreeable. It's about the experience. When financial issues come up in your marriage, and they probably will at some point, it's the experience of going through it that makes you different. It's the experience when somebody gets sick and that wife or that husband is there to nurse the other person around. It's the experience. It's the experience when uh, healing needs to take place in relationships and pride and guilt and hurt, and that person is there. It's the experience. If every experience is a negative one, that marriage is not going to survive. 
But even in a negative situation, the experience is positive that marriage will thrive and be better and better and better. We have to make right choices. It's the experience. Look to your neighbor and say, it's the experience. Say, Rockstar Marriage. Three. Decide how you're going to show up. Have a mental decision every day. When you wake up in, in the morning, before you go to bed at night, Decide how you're going to show up. If, you, if you're going to show up with an attitude, it's going to come out. But if you're going to show up with love no matter what you're going through, that's going to show up. So decide how you're going to show up. Look to your neighbor and say, I'm going to decide how I'm going to show up. I'm a rock star marriage. Rock star marriage. Let me give you a scripture with that. Ephesians 5. 18. Ephesians 5, 18. Uh, and be not drunk with wine, wearing in excess, be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart, giving thanks always for all things unto God and unto the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right there, before he gets into the marriage covenant in Ephesians 5, he says, get yourself right. We're not going into the, the marriage talk that I normally do between my, um, uh, Ephesians 5, 22 through 33. But what I'm saying is, right before that, uh, Paul talks to the Ephesian church. He said, before you deal in the marriage, you need to get right. Look to the name and say, get right. Decide how you're going to show up. Could you imagine what kind of help? Let's, let's, let's take it out of a marriage sense and put it in a church sense. Sister Jaquel always come with expectation. Sometimes in church, we forget that we have to decide how we're going to show up. Why not come with some expectation into your marriage? Why not come with some excitement? Why not come with some joy? Why not come with some peace? Why do you always need to get the peace from the other person? Why not bring the peace and the joy with you? Why not bring the hope with you? Why not bring the love with you? If you're always pulling, 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 you're never giving, 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 you showed up at the wrong place. So you have to decide how you're going to show up. You're going to have to decide how, how you're going to present yourself. You've got to decide that, you know what, no matter what I'm going through, my challenges that I'm going through, I'm going to show up with joy. I'm going to show up with peace. I'm going to show up with love. I'm going to show up with a, a personality and an attitude that makes a difference in my marriage, not, that, not keeps it the same or makes it worse. I'm going to give you an example. I heard this story, and it, it was impactful. It has nothing to do with a marriage. It just, it, it depend, it just it had to do with the type of character somebody had. It's December 24th. Somebody's catching a plane to go to Ohio. Plane's delayed. So since the plane's delayed, it goes into a Starbucks. And the Starbucks person there is just smiling and just enjoying life. You know what I mean? There's somebody you can meet, somebody just enjoying life. So the, so the gentleman goes to her and says, well, I just want a uh, half cup latte, whatever you order. And she said, going to visit family, huh? And, you know, he's already down because he's traveling on the 24th. And he's got some bad news, so he's going home to visit with his folks. And she said, and he goes back and says, why you ask? And she said, well, you know, we don't find too many people at the airport on the evening of December 24th unless they're going home to visit the family. And she said, and, and he said, well, why are you working? And she said, because I want to bring joy to people 
that may not be all that excited to be traveling on Christmas Eve. Could you imagine? She chose the word Christmas Eve because she wants to bring joy. What do you bring into your marriage when you show up to work? Because so, don't be fooled, your marriage is work. Amen? Last point, and then I'm going to yield the rest of my time to prophetess. So I'm going to have a rock star marriage. Point four, take action now. Look to your neighbor and say, take action now. Whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you, uh, uh, you've been divorced, you need to take action now. Don't sit back and let somebody else do it. You do it. Amen? If you begin to work on your marriage or your relationship or yourself, when the time comes, it'll be right on time. Amen? Come on, give God a hand, clap of praise. And look to and say, rock star marriage. That's what I got coming. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We thank He Now, I'm the one used about being color coordinated. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm just going to just, just flow along with Pastor Adam. I'm going to the Message Bible. God pretty much made this simple. Um, those of you, we're going to go look at the Message Bible, and I'm going to start off. And even in the Message Bible, it says to be married, to be single. Because 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Paul is speaking to the Corinthian church. And um, just at, at verse number 1, uh, we can see here it says, Now getting down to the questions you asked in your letter to me, first, is it a good thing to have sexual relations? One of the things that stands out here is that here it was, the church knew to go to the priest to get the answer. They didn't turn on to find things about relation on the television or to look towards the world, it was very interesting that they took the time to write to the Apostle Paul. And so many times the church, when it comes to relationships, we want to get that from our friends and some of them not even in church. We want to look at certain TV programs and movies. Um, just like so many marriages would arrive because every... We had a lot of evangelical housewives was reading the book, The Fifty Shades of Grey, trying to depict that to be their marriage. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. And so verse here, verse 2 through 6, and then I'm going to give out certain sections um, of this to the ministers and have you to read. And when I call your name, just come stand up front here. And verse 2 through 6, it says, Certainly. But only within a certain context is good for a man to have a wife and for a woman to have a husband. Sexual drives are strong, but marriage is strong enough to contain them and to provide for a balance and fulfilling sexual life in a world of sexual disorder. Think about this. Paul wrote this thousands and thousands of years ago, and right now in the 21st century, we have a world that is in, has full of sexual disorder. Can you agree with me? The marriage bed must be a place of mutuality, the husband seeking to satisfy his wife and the wife seeking to satisfy her husband. Marriage is not a place to stand up for your own rights. Uh-oh. Marriage is a decision to serve the other, whether in bed or out. Hallelujah. Abstaining from sex is permissible for a period of time if you both agree to it. And if it's for the purpose of prayer and fasting, but only for such time, then come back together again. Satan has an ingenious way of tempting us when we least expect it. I'm not understanding commanding these periods of abstinence, only providing my best counsel if you to choose them. So we have to understand, even in times of sickness and wise, we have certain things. So it's not all about the bedroom, amen? And singles, you must understand that when you're looking for a mate, and I say this, when you say those vows, it says for better or for worse. And so we have to understand that so many, this world is such a sexual disorder that that's everything is, is, is driven towards that. 
so the next verse at verse 7, I can get Minister Smith, amen, verse 7 through 9, if you can pick up and read there. And the reason why I like the message Bible because it is speaking very plain. I really ain't have to say, you just got to be plumb dumb. You don't understand what Paul is saying. He's speaking our language. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Sometimes I wish everyone was single like me. A simpler life in many ways. I want you to know they has an exclamation point. Amen. A simpler life. It says a simpler life in many ways. We're going to find out why Paul's saying what he's saying. Go ahead. But celibacy is not for everyone any more than marriage is. Uh-oh, that's a good point. Celibacy could be for you, amen, and some people are everybody that wants to be married. We have to really seek God on that, amen. It's not to say that you shouldn't get married, but there are certain individuals that God have called them to a lifestyle of celibacy, amen. God gives the gift of single life to some, the gift of the married to others. I do, though, tell the unmarried and widows that singleness might be the best thing for them as it has been for me. Amen. But if that can't manage, but if they can't manage their desires and emotions, they should by all means go ahead and get married. The difficulties of marriage are preferable by far to a sexual tortured life as a single. <laughs> That's a word right there. I'm going to read that again. The difficulties of marriage are preferable by far to a sexual tortured life as a single. So you got to understand. That's why we pastors stood here and say that marriage takes work. Just because you may be good in the bedroom is not going to make sure that you, means that you're going to have a happy marriage. Amen. Thank you, Minister Smith. And then being a single, we have to understand that, that there's some simplicity that comes with being single. You know, so many women, we want to run into getting married. You know, not you got to take the opportunity, you know. You can't do what you just, what you wanted. You can get up on your own. I can marry some of you single women now. Um, you can get up on your own. Go. You ain't got to tell somebody where you're going at. You don't have to report to anyone. If you don't want to cook that day, you don't have to cook. You want to walk around with your pajamas on and don't do nothing. You, you got to outweigh and look at all those things. And that's why I tell you, enjoy your singleness. Amen? Because, you know, one of the things is I thank God that um, Pastor Adam's a type of husband, even though I didn't, we didn't start off right, but God made it right. He's not a husband. You know, he's very patient, you know, with me or what have you. He's never been one of those husbands that's been very demanding. And so we work together as a team. He never had a requirement on me that, you know, I'm the one to wear the pants in the family. I mean, he was working eight or nine hours. I was working eight or nine hours, so he didn't expect me now to come home and cook and clean and do all that. We have to understand, married men, is that you got to minister to your wife before you get to the red bedroom. That means you can help out with the children. That means you can help out with the cooking. All those things so that you can work together, what, as a team. And you have to, as Pastor is saying, what, wor what works for me in my marriage, you got to see how it's going to work for you and yours. Amen. Pastor Adam and I work together as a team. I'm the one that likes to do a lot of the cleaning. He's the one that does cook. I've been on him lately because he's been slacking in that cooking area. Amen. <laughs> and so although the children, you know, they tease and, and they say, oh, mama don't cook or what have you. You know, I just don't like cooking. I figure if I don't like doing it, then let the person that enjoy doing it do it. Amen. But Pastor Adam never picks up, does, never picks up a broom, doesn't clean the restroom. I do all that stuff. Amen? So it works, you know, for us. And then some of you, you may have husbands that can't cook. And so it's better for the wife to cook. Amen? If you want to eat. <laughs> Glory be to God. So let me get um, Minister Justin, if you can read verse 10 through um, 14. And remember those who are following, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 10 through 14. Amen? And if you are married, stay married. This is the master's commandment, not mine. If a wife should leave her husband, she must either remain single or else come back and make things right with him. And a husband has no right to get rid of his wife. Ouch. You know, all this stuff that the world is doing, you know, that woman done had three, four children for you. Yes, she done picked up some way. She don't look like what she did 15 years ago. And then all of a sudden now you want to turn her in because you want another, another version. 
Amen. These are the things, single women, that you need to have these conversations. You need to sit down with 2 Corinthians 7 and say, okay, let me see if you're the right mate for me. Let's see if we're going to agree with what the Apostle Paul stated that God gave him that we're going to be able to walk this out what it states. Amen? Go ahead. For the rest of you who are in mixed marriages, Christian married to non-Christian, we have no explicit command from the master. So this is what you must do. If you are a man with a wife who is not a believer but who still wants to live with you, hold on to her. If you are a woman with a husband who is not a believer but he wants to live with you, hold on to him. The unbelieving husband shares to an extent in the holiness of his wife, and the unbelieving wife is, is likewise touched by the holiness of her husband. Otherwise, your children would be left out. As it is, they are also included in the spiritual purposes of God. Thank you, Mr. Justin. This here is speaking of, and that's the reason why we can do things different. Seeing that you need to go through the course of your process. The Bible tells us not to be unequally yoked. Some of us, may, we didn't ha maybe we didn't take the time to read or we didn't have anyone to instruct her. That, the, that does not mean some of us, um, our ancestors, they got married and I've had to deal with counseling with individuals where both of them might have been unsaved, and then one got saved all of a sudden. They're like, uh-oh, one of them may say, oh, no, 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 no. So that don't mean that you say, you know what, I'm going to get rid of you. Because you both came and you both were unsaved. And, and this is where Paul comes in at, is that you are continue to do walk your walk with the Lord. Because that don't mean you compromise. Here's where we get in trouble at in the church. And I was speaking with one, a lady in the, in the beauty shop. She said, you know, I tried that. Well, you compromise, I'm going to stay home with my husband because he ain't going. She says, you know what, I found out that didn't work. That was just as miracle with me, uh, with me going. Cause I figure out that as long as I do what God tells me to do, it made things at my house better. And so we have to understand that what Paul is stating here. So we have an opportunity in the 21st century. Don't go and choose someone that's unequally, oh, unequally yoked with you. Amen. Amen? Amen. You're hearing this word right now. And don't think that, you know what, I'm just going to marry and then I'm going to change him later or her later. It doesn't work that way. Amen? It doesn't work that way. What, what does it look like you're a Christian, you hook it up with a Muslim? What does it look like? It's just like the Muslim. We have a lot of bloodless religions. What, what are mother? The Catholic religion. That any religion, the Mormon religion, that does not believe in the blood of Jesus Christ that is being unequal. You're already setting yourself up for challenges. So that's where you're going to have that ministry of being on your knees. Amen. I ain't melting nobody, but if you're there, God is saying you're going to pray your way through. Can't turn them back. Hallelujah. You're going to have to be on your knees. You're going to have some neology. Amen. And you're going to have to believe God for that husband, that husband, that wife to come to the Lord. But you are to, he says, if any, what Paul said, but you mauling before them, perhaps that would change them. You compromising in your marriage is never going to bring anyone closer to Jesus. It doesn't work. Amen. Because one day you're going to have to stand before. And I put it this way. I'm just making it plain. Amen. Let me give you some mad theology. It don't make sense for both of us going to hell. Amen. I'm going to follow God. Whether they want to follow God or not, I'm going to be obedient to God. Hallelujah. And then we talk about the children that come in that relationship. That them children are able to, to see a spouse or see one of the parents that's laying hold to the word of God. That you're modeling that before them. Amen. Glory be to God. Could I get um, Minister, Minister Parker, Parker, if you can read verse 15 and 17. Yes, we go at verse 15, go to 17, through 17. On the other hand, if the unbelieving spouse walks out, you've got to let him or her go. You don't have to hold on desperately. It's not right there. Uh -huh. I mean, Paul, I said, ma'am, I read this. He, he said, you don't have to hold on desperately. Listen, either they're going to love you or they're not. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't have to hold on you know you see some, you, you know that, first of all, you knew that thing wasn't going to work from the beginning. 
Amen. And then you see, regardless of what, what does that desk be holding on? When things are not, that person refused just to line up with what the word of God is. And they're causing you, you know what, to, to change your values and your morals. That's what holding on desk, that you're willing to do anything. Hallelujah. Just to keep that man or woman. I had an individual, oh, they're supposed to be in a, a um, th that woman seen the sign where her husband was supposed to be a godly man and took her to like this sex club. And thought that she was going mm -hmm. to, to, to line up with that. And she was like, oh, no. If that means that we have to separate from this marriage because I am a woman of God, I'm not getting ready because you're going through some midlife crisis, that I'm going to defile my temple and defile my vows in order to, like, to make you happy. In the no, no, no. See, somebody that who does that, well, you know, because my husband wanted me to do that, that's why I, I, I did it. If it does not line up with the word of God, what does it mean, what is good sexual relationship? If, the, if the, one of the spouses, if that makes them feel uncomfortable, then that's not right to please the other one. When it says, uh, amen, do you, you, you may understand that? Because if you, um, Pastor, we, we um, like to watch like the murder shows. I like to watch fatal vows, the things that couples get into, try, and it ends up always ending up to be deadly. Because someone is not walking out and doing what the things that God, if it doesn't line up with the word of God, then don't do it. Amen? Go ahead. God has called us to make the best of it as peacefully as we can. You never know, wife. The way you handle this might bring your husband not only back to you, but to God. Hallelujah. Amen? So falling out to God can transform that man. When I was walking in things of God, Pastor Adam was watching me. He wasn't even a pastor then. But it created something in him, a hunger. He said, I want what she has. Amen? He wanted that great, I created a greater hunger and thirst within him that he wanted to say, you know, I want to know this God. I, wanna, I just don't want mere religion. I want this Holy Spirit. I want these gifts of the spirits. I, he didn't, and one thing I thank God for my husband, that even though he didn't understand a lot of the things, he never stopped me. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. That's where uh, Minister Smith said, she said, Lord, I'm so glad that, because if God tried to bring me something, it's going to stop me from attending church. If y'all don't know from the South, we call that them, that hot pot of grits. She said, I may have to be in jail somewhere. <laughs> Amen. So you got to know that. You got to sit down and have this conversation that we can do that maybe our mothers and fathers did not know to do because they was raised up in the old school and the church taught that the wrong way. It said submit to your husband. They thought they had to submit to everything. Mm -hmm. That word submit does not mean if it doesn't line up with God, that's not what you submit to. Yes, yes, yes. You su submit oh, to yes. that which is of God. If that is, because your husband's going to tell you, well, you know, you're supposed to submit to me. Let's go out here and rob the bank. Um, listen, see, if the, if, if the Muslim gentleman would have, if, would have a, knew what his word was, he was, first of all, he was following his wife. It was his wife that influenced him. Mm -hmm. mm. You see that? It was the wife. What does that look like? That goes back to the relationship with Jezebel and Ahab. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Jezebel was always running to his wife to, you know, when he wanted something. That is out of order in a relationship. You are the king and you are the priest. Amen. He is called the woman. The woman, you are not supposed to cause your husband to err in God. Yes, yes, yes. You are yes. supposed to be able to give. You are called wisdom. When they do come to you, you're supposed to give them godly wisdom. You're supposed to give them what God says, not what they want to hear sometimes. Hallelujah. So if you are a woman that says in the word of God, when that man does come to you, you should be able to give them the wisdom. Amen. So we don't want relationships. We don't want um, Jezebel and Ahab to end our relationship. You need to say, Jezebel, you're not the boss of me. Jezebel, you're not the boss of me. We don't want that spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't no woman want a weak man anyway. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory. We, we want meekness. He ain't never say weak. You just, whatever I, whatever I say do, you just going to do it. Some women may want men like that, but I know I never wanted one like that. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Praise Go God. ahead, daughter. You never know, husband. The way you handle this might bring your wife not only back to you, but back to God. 
And don't be wishing you were someplace else with someone else. Hallelujah. I, I think that's plain. Don't Go ahead. You know how you have those sexual fantasy? You know, <laughs> that's what pornography is. Oh, I'm just keeping it real. That's what pornography is. That was your romance. Now, you trying to make your relationship out to what you've seen on TV. It ain't going to work. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Where you, where you are right now is God's place for you. Live and obey and love and believe right there. God, not God, not your marital status, defines... God, read that again. God, God, not your mental status, defines your life. Don't think I'm being harder on you than on the others. I give this same counsel to all the church. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Come on, Brother Dante. Come on, Minister Dante. Pick up on verse 18 through 22. Are you learning something here today? Yes. Yes. Amen. So if you want to give some singles, I say, listen, I advise you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Amen. And spend some time there. Go ahead. Uh, verse 18 and 19. Were you Jewish at the time God called you? Don't try to remove the evidence. Were you non-Jewish at the time of your call? Don't become a Jew. Being Jewish isn't the point. The really important thing is obeying God's call, following his commands. Come on, cause let me, and this here, you know, being that we have a Mexican Jew, we, God has not called us. We, we are grafted in. And what some people do in the body of Christ, they think, okay, now, because I realize that I have a Jewish DNA, that I just need, that I need to become Jewish. That's not what God said. Amen? He, he told you, just, just follow God. It's not about us changing one thing from the other, but we're to accept what Jesus Christ has stated and what he has said. Amen. Go ahead. I have to say that took a hit on me right there because when I first came to the church and I found out he was a Messiah, I was like, oh, I got to become Jewish. I got to do this. I got to do that. No, I was thinking I couldn't work on Sunday and stuff like that. <laughs> no, we got to realize that God is, we're, just, we're, supposed to bring, we're supposed to bring them in. Amen. We're supposed to bring them in because we want them to accept the Messiah. Yeah. Hallelujah. You're not finished, son. Oh. You got verse 20 and 22 to pick up on. Verse 20 and 22. He is mighty and all powerful. Okay. Verse 20, 22. Stay where you are uh, or stay where you were when God called your name. Were you a slave? Slavery is no roadblock to obeying and believing. I don't mean you're stuck and can't leave. If you have a chance at freedom, go ahead and take it. I'm simply trying to point out that under you, under your new master, you're going to experience a marvelous freedom you would never have dreamed of. On the other hand, if you were free when Christ called you, you'll experience a delightful enslavement to God and you would never have dreamed of. You would have experienced, or you'll experience a delightful enslavement to God you would never have dreamed of. Okay, that's, I said it right there. Amen. Come on, pick it up on verse 20, sign at verse 23 to 28, Minister Margo. Amen. So we got to understand, simply just be who God has called you to be. Amen. And that makes the point is, is that. How is that you've been, you, were, you were serving God all your life and all of a sudden because you mad, get married, all of a sudden now you're not following after the things of God? Oh I see that, that happens so many. You in the church serving God and here come this knucklehead and all of a sudden now they don't turn you from the sign that you had with God. Men that was serving God, now here come a little Jersey Jezebel all of a sudden now done turned you from serving God. Amen. Paul says, no, you keep walking in things of God, and if they don't know God, and truly if that's your mate to be, then God will touch their heart. Yes. Hallelujah. You're on your assignment with God, and then all of a sudden, you just become to know God yesterday, and all of a sudden, now I'm supposed to follow you. My God, that's good. That's good. Come on, we mess up. And, and, and church women fall for that trick all the time. Why? Because you want to be married so bad. And start obeying what God says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to see, we got to know how to read the scripture. 
We got to understand what it means. It's a, but that man or that woman, amen, needs to be linked up with Christ. Oh, God sent some people free. Come on, because so, some of you, some of you, you, you know this. If you would have got this some years ago, you would have said, you know what, man, where prophet's age was at some years ago. I wish I would have met her a couple of years ago. Man, look at here. Glory be to God. Glory. That's why Paul say, some of us, man, if we would have sought God, we would have just said, you know, wait, wait, I, it wasn't meant for me to be married. Amen. Or oh, I would have learned the warning. Said so that's not one counseling session that I've done with a, a, a divorced man or woman, and say, "What did you not see the signs?" Yes, I seen them. But what God put the stop sign? We what ran right past it. Hallelujah. You got to understand that, and, and that's where God's grace and mercy, because listen, I'm not standing here saying that I've always had a right path. Listen, God spoke to me when I was in London. He told me when I was getting ready to minister to the singles and to the singles and to the married couple. He says, you know what? But when you link up with God, you may not start off right, but God will make it right. Amen. So you got to understand that's the grace and mercy of God. You know, some of us said the mother caught us probably married over 50 years, you know, got married from the beginning. Oh, of course we want, we, everybody going to be like Justin, start off as a virgin, amen, and then got married, had children and all of that. But when you get with Jesus, he'll, make, he'll fix that thing up. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm questioning people look at Pastor Adam. They didn't know that I, Pastor Adam and I didn't get married to Danielle was three. But those were the words of my mouth I always said before I even had her. I said, I want my child, I wasn't even thinking, you know, I want my child, to, I want my daughter to be in my way. I used to say that before I even had children. But the power of what? Two things, I said that and I said that I was going to marry a Jew. And I got both of them. One was a good, the <laughs> so the child had no wonder when I slept with her on the first night I got pregnant. Because that seed had already been germinating in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. What? what, what, what? The words that we speak. We got to understand that. Go ahead, daughter. Uh, verse 23. All of you, slave and free both, were once held hostage in a sinful society. Then a huge sum was paid out for your ransom. So please don't, out of old habit, slip back into being or doing what everyone else tells you. Friends, stay where you were called to be. God is there. Hold the high ground with him at your side. 25. The master did not give explicit direction regarding virgins, but as one much experienced in the mercy of the master and loyal to him all the way, you can trust my counsel. Because of the current pressures on us from all sides, I think it would probably be best to stay just as you are. Are you married? Stay married. Are you unmarried? Don't get married. But there's certainly no sin in getting married, whether you're a virgin or not. All I am saying is that when you marry, you take an additional stress in an already stressful time, and I want to spare you if possible. Come on, Paul. He, 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 listen, you take, count the cost. Now, he said, in a, let's think about the world that we're in right now. And he says, okay, if you want to get married, go ahead, but then don't be crying later. Don't be crying later, because see, women, we think that getting married is that, you know, that's going to fix, that's going to fix everything. It just says what? Count the cost and go into, is it worth the fight? Yes. Yes, it is. If you want to be married. But don't be foolish to think that it's just going to be tiptoeing through the tulips because of what you don't watch on TV or because of what you read out of a book. Oh, you know, because from little children, we teach them the baby dies and play with the baby dies. That's ingrained in us, so we have that instilled in us. And then when reality sets in, uh-oh. This is not Ken and Barbie with my Barbie house and my two car and, and picking white picket fence. We got to come out of fantasy land. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So I, I, I keep hearing us in my spirit. Count the cost. He said, I want to spare you if possible. Amen. Let me get, uh, where I lost my readers at? Lost some readers. 
They thought they, 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 ran, they ran off on me. Come on, um, Minister, you got Brother Dante, come and read 29. Come and I'll take us, I'll close us on it. Verse, yeah, pick up at 29, 31. All right, I do not want to point out, friends, that time is of the essence. Uh, or he said, I do want to point out, friends, the time is of the essence. There is no time to waste, so don't complicate your lives unnecessarily. Keep it simple. In marriage, grief, joy, whatever. Even in ordinary things, your daily routines of shopping and so on, deal as sparingly as possible with the things the world thrusts on you. This world, as you see it, is on its way out. That is a good word. Justin, you're going to be coming up next. Thank you, son. He said, and I was watching, Pastor Adam, I was watching this here um, Dr. Speak call on super genes. And one of the things he was talking about how your genes and your body can reduplicate themselves is by keeping a life that is simple. And so when I, when I read this, it was confirming everything the doctor stated. It stopped piling stuff up, doing things that are unnecessary. Listen to what he said. Well, there is shop- Sometimes, lay you just going to need this. You know what? It may be good for you not to go shopping today. You got to be able to discern, you know what? You know, I'm not going to add this extra stress and getting out here and doing shopping that I don't need to do. Because then now, when it's time to minister at home, you're tired. You can't do that. Oh, I'm melting people business. I'm, I'm melting. I'm just saying, I didn't say it. Paul stated what he said. Even in ordinary things, your daily routines of shopping and so on, deal as sparingly as possible in the things of the world that the world thrusts on you. Don't let the world just thrust things on you. This world, as you see, is on its way out. Listen, the world is on its way out. Do you, do you not understand that? The world is on its way out. The new Jerusalem, the world that you see, the new Jerusalem is going to come down, and that's where we're going to live. We're going to live on eternally in the new Jerusalem. Oh, and let me just bust some of y'all bubbles. Yes, even in your marriages, don't think that you're going to be, you're going to be live. You, you're going to have your own mansion. That husband, as you know, it, it ain't going to be your husband. Ah, and then we get it all twisted. You're supposed to, you're supposed to bring God on the scene in the family. That word family means father and mother, I love you. You're supposed to demonstrate the love of Jesus Christ as you are here. When God gives you children, you are to root, um, teach them and to replicate themselves as Christ. Think about I just messed some of y'all theology up. How is it that you think you're going to get to heaven and some of y'all don't marry, two people have been married, I remember we had a gentleman here married about four or five times. Which one are you going to decide which one you think you're going to better pick your house tonight? No, we will worship Je- Jesus Christ, him, Lord, our Ma- uh, Lord Almighty. We got to understand kingdom principles. Because as my daughter said, we get so... Um, that, that spirit of selfishness we think is mine, mine, mine. As much as I love Pastor Adam, but Pastor Adam going to be looking at the king of kings, the glory, the glory. You will know them. You will know your children, but it's going to be so much different. You're going to get a new body. Now, I don't know all until how God's going to do that, but that there I do know through the spirit of revelation of him speaking to me and me talking with him in reference to that. Why do the Bible say that every man or woman got to work out their own soul salvation? Did the, did the Bible say that when you get married, that because you get married, you automatically, we just read that, that it means it's a guarantee that I'm going to heaven because I married the pastor Adam and he's serving God? Paul didn't say that. That husband or that wife going to have to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Or else you will not see them. And I guarantee you, if you got a choice to go with your husband who's going to hell or to go to heaven, which one you going to? Amen? That's why I say I'm heaven bound. So some of us may have to give some what? Neology. You on your knees because you like it. Well, you praying behind the scenes. I don't want him to go to hell. I don't want her to go to hell. God, you gave this man to me, this woman to me. I don't read the word of God. They don't pass out of me. They don't told me I can't throw them back. <laughs> then you just going to have to go through. Amen. You're going to you're gonna have to activate that faith. 
That's if you believe God. You're supposed to count the cost before you got mad. He said for better or for worse, whether they have money or whether they broke. Just because when a man no longer have a job don't mean, well, mm, child, I got to move on to something else. He can't provide for me. No, 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 no. Nah, it don't work that way. Amen? Come on, Justin. We're wrapping it up. Amen? We're wrapping up. We're bringing it on home. We're going to, I'm going to need somebody to get back there some instrumental because Pastor Adam's going to pray over all the married people, and I'm going to pray over the singles. Go ahead. Verse 30. Pick up at verse 32. I want you to live as free of complications as possible. When you're unmarried, you're free to concentrate on simply pleasing the master. Marriage involves you in all nuts and bolts of domestic life and in wanting to please your spouse, leading to so many more demands on your attention. The time and energy that married people spend on caring for and nurturing each other, the unmarried can spend in becoming whole and, and holy. Wait, wait, y'all see that? I know it's married. We see us as married people. I, I got to re- re- That is so true. That is true. You have to give of yourselves as married. And, and think about you single women in the room. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Paul said you, you can spend in becoming whole and a holy instrument of God. You're supposed to enjoy that while you can. And when you enjoy being single, when you get married, it's all that much better. Because you didn't spend all your, mar- all your senior years thinking about when I get married, when I get married, when I get married. You just enjoyed it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So when the mate comes, you're able to say, yeah, nah, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to, to um, come to a consensus or, you know, compromise in this area. Yes, I got to share my toothbrush holder. You know, with someone, yes, I, I, every now and then I have to pick up, no, I don't want the, the music yet. I don't have to pick up behind, you know, individual, because I spent seven years just cleaning up after myself. So, you know, well, okay, yeah, I'm going to pick this up. Baby, you're going to have to learn to pick up after yourself, and I'm not going to keep doing this. I'm, I, I know you're used to being single, but you have to pick up after yourself. Amen? Go ahead. <laughs> yes, I'm telling on somebody. Go ahead. I'm just reading the word. <laughs> Ouch. The unmarried can spend in being, becoming whole and holy instruments of God. I'm trying to be helpful and make it e- as easy as possible for you, not making things harder. All I want is for you to be able to develop a way of life in which you can spend plenty of time together with the master without a lot of distractions. That's it. What are you married or single, we're going to have to watch out for the enemy of distractions. And I call them scugs. Satan, continuous uses of distraction. That's what he do. Remember we looked at how the woman was a mighty woman of God, and it says how the, what the spirits did to her was to distract her and to stop her. She was holy, she was consecrated, but this spirit was so strong that what it would do was stop her, distract her, so she could not pray. Distract her so she could not read the word. Distraction. That's how the enemy comes in in many marriages and many in, in our lives. It's through distraction. And we overlook it. Because we're saying, we look and we, if, now if, he, if he showed up and manifested himself in any other way, oh, we'll catch that sap sucker. But that's why he's Satan. That's why he's cunning. Amen. So you're going to have to rap. No, I'm not going to have any distractions when it comes to my prayer life. I'm not going to have any distractions when it comes to tithing. I'm not going to have any distractions when it comes to the house of God. It's not going to have any distractions when it comes to walking love. I'm not going to have any distractions. Amen. And you have the authority. I bind the spirit of distractions in the name of Jesus. I bind whatever spirit that try to come against my prayer life, in my marriage, in my, in my own personal ministry time or what have you. Because he said, what, two, what God brings together, let no man or woman bring apart. It's God, your spouse, and then your children. Stop putting the children before your spouse. Stop putting your children before God. He says, I'm a jealous God. We have to understand that. That's the reason one thing, Pastor Adam and I, 
our marriage is so intact that so when ministry came along and, and children came along, it, didn't, it couldn't rock nothing. Amen. Because children going to grow up and leave your house and then what happened? Y'all be sitting there looking at each other. Hmm. No, no, no. It's one thing I learned in social work. There will be no crying around here with an empty nest syndrome at the black stock household. Hallelujah. That's going to be a dance and a jig. Hey, glory be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Talking about empty nest syndrome, my behind. No, because what? Well, we love each other. Amen. Amen. We love each other. Then the love pours over on the children. We didn't just put, make the children. I never made my children my love. And then when the children leave off, you didn't ever have built a relationship of love with your mate. Oh, yeah, I'm preaching real good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Verse 36 and 38. I'm going to take it down to 40. If a man has a woman friend to whom he is loyal but never intended to marry, have decided to serve God as a single, and then changes his mind, decided he should marry her, he should go ahead and marry. It's no sin. Why is Paul talking like this? Because they were doing, they had all type of crazy stuff. Right now, do you know that there are churches that still, that, that if you was divorced, they tell the people that they cannot remarry? Because they read the text wrong? There are people that are living right now today because the church of old taught that. That because they was divorced. There, let me write this down. I call it the triple A. You know, we got triple A. That's what y'all, listen. These are the three reasons for divorce. Adultery, abandonment, and abuse. Jesus spoke that. That's what Jesus said. God does not intend any man or woman. If somebody walks out on you and that was no fault to your own, why would he cause you to suffer and not to remarry? Come on. And then, if somebody slapped you upside your head every week, Ooh, why would God expect for you to stay in that? And, and if somebody, hallelujah, abuse you, why would God expect for you to stay in that? Now, if the one repents, the man, or what, if the say for the man has been abusive, and he says, forgive, or someone committed adultery and say, Forgive me, I'm going to work on it. There's plenty of magic, but God has come in. Yes. And if the two of them agree on that, yes. then that shows the power and the grace of God. But if the other one's going to say, nah, I'm just going to do, I'm staying out here and do whatever I want to do, and either you're going to take it or leave it. Well, baby, you, I'm getting ready to get the leaving. So we got to study scripture in light of culture. You're not damaged good because you were divorced. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Hallelujah. God. Thank you, Lord. But so many people have been hurt and wounded because the church taught that. Amen. It says, it's not even a step down from celibacy as some say. Here it is, Paul said, this crazy stuff that y'all was, they were teaching back there 2,000 years ago. They still got some dumb stuff they're teaching today. On the other hand, if a man is comfortable in his decision for a single life in service to God, a single life is what? In service to God. See, when we get this, we understand this, and you stop looking at it any other way, that I'm just, I'm single. I'm just tired of being single. Being single means you are in service to God. I, that man, look at here, that's a great title to have. You see the difference? Just start walking around talking about I'm single. No, what you, uh, you're not married yet. I'm in service to God. How about answering people that way? So when you go to the, everybody want to know, girl, you ain't married yet, you 30-something? Say, I'm in service to God. I bet you that shut them up at the dinner table. But yeah, but just say what God said. You ain't married yet? No, because I'm in service to God. What, what, what you talking about? I'm, I'm in, just like I just said. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I am in service to God. But so many singles are walking around, they not in service to God. That's right. 
That's why the devil beating up on them. Oh, come on, you need to go ahead and repent right now, you singles in the name of Jesus. You try to do everything except being in service of God. So you drawing all this stuff on you from the world or what have you. And when you change and flip that mindset, I'm talking about do it right now and say, I'm in service to God. Glory be to God. I wish somebody would have told that to me. There's a lot of things that I would have not had to walk through or done. And somebody told me that being single meant that I was in service to God. Glory be to God. I would have had that on my car instead of talking about ask no questions. You got vapors. I would have had on the side of my car in Miami, Florida. I'm in service to God. Glory be to God. <laughs> <laughs> on the other hand if a man is coupled in his decision to a single life in service of God and is entirely his own conviction and not imposed on uh oh impo come on imposed on him by others imposed on him how many of us let our family members impose stuff on us? they got a show out now talking about my mom and my dad was marrying me what is that that show yeah what did it say? Married by mom and dad. That is so out of order. Married by mom and dad. I don't have to sleep with them. Danielle need to find you. Danielle will have to, she will have to hear from God whether that's her mate. Because when things go wrong, she ain't gonna come back to me and say, Well, mom, dad, y'all picked them. Nuh uh. But see, that's what the world doing. So it, it looks all good. It looks like y'all on the couch laughing. Hee <laughs> hee So don't let what? What? On, by others. He says, I'm trying. It says, the time and energy that married people spend on caring I go, oh, Justin, I done went up and back. I guess God want to say this to somebody else again. <laughs> Marriage is spiritually and morally right and not interior, inferior to singleness in any way. Boo. Boo. Although, as Boo. I indicated earlier, because of the times we live in, I do have pastoral reasons for encouraging singleness. Ooh. Boo. Boo. I didn't even know that was going to come up there. He says, I have pastoral reasonings for encouraging singleness. How about sexual transmitted diseases? Amen. A wife must stay with her husband as long as he lives. If he dies, she is free to marry anyone she chooses. She will, of course, want to marry a what? A believer and have the blessing of the master, which is Jesus Christ, by now you know that I think she'll be better off staying single. The master, in my opinion, thinks so too. <laughs> Pastor Adam asked me all the time. I said, listen, if you was to go before me, I said, the devil is a lie. You think I'm going to be looking for somebody? I said, it's not happening. No. I have to be like y'all. I have to be pulling out the oil every now and then. Hallelujah. <laughs> Because not happening. Uh, I just tell the Lord, die by fire in that area. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I'm going to get the experience, but y'all singles didn't know how to experience when y'all were single. Shoot, I'm going to roll up like, whoo. You mean tell me I got a couple nobody? I ain't got to do no. Whoo, shoot. Look at him. Glory be to God. If I want to sleep at 12 o'clock, I can sleep at 12 o'clock. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. One. That's it. My what? Let's stand to our feet. Just because I, I want to do this. Um, oh, they have a song? Okay, because I'm going to do the singles and Pastor Adam. I'm going to pray over the single. Pastor Adam's going to pray over the master. I can get the singles to come to the altar. Stay on up here. Warren, stay on up here. 
You ain't married yet. You, you go home and take this to your fiance. Amen. So the single, let's go ahead and put that on. I want all the singles. Let me, um, Justin, go back there in the back and, and fix that. All the singles. Listen, my young men that are 12 and older, the men that are 12 and over, come down. If you're a young woman, a young man, listen, 12 and older. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want my sons to, to marry godly mates. I want them to have no, you know, we can't wait till they get 18 and 19, you know, wait till they get 20 and 25. No, we want to speak over them now in the name of Jesus. We can put that on, whatever the music they say they, they chose back there. Hallelujah. And pastor's going to pray over the married individuals in the room. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, you have spoken through this word in, in 1 Corinthians and, um, chapter 7, through the King James and even through the Message Bible. Even it has strengthened and encouraged Pastor Adam and I. Amen. But Father, right now, as we have all the singles, the single men and women that are here before you at this altar, Turn the music list if you turn it up. Okay, that's it. Turn it up. Just turn it up. That'll be, that'll do, that'll do. Just turn it up. So I want you to get your hearts right. Some of you, you've been in relationships before that didn't work. You tried the dating. But right now, God is giving you an opportunity. He's speaking where you can make right decisions. You can count the costs. And right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, I break that spirit of anxiousness off of them in the name of Jesus. I break the negative words that the devil speaks to them in reference to their singleness. That, Father, as they leave this place today, that they will recognize and realize that being single, until you bring the right mate for them, that they're in service to the Lord. Father, there is a blessings with them being connected with Jesus, Father. Regardless of what age they are right now, Father, to the men you say that to them that find a wife, they find a good thing. They find favor, Father. Have these men, these young men, and these men at the altar that they will choose from your eyesight, Father, in the name of Jesus, that they will keep themselves. They will not be ruled by the ram of their emotions for the women. And for the men, they will not be ruled by their sexual parts in the name of Jesus, Father. Father, have their eyes to be pure in the name of Jesus. I decree and speak over them, Father, that they will not awaken love before it's time in the name of Jesus. Teach each and every one of them individually, Father, how to minister to you and how you will minister to them in their singleness and their service to God. Father, let them forgive themselves from past relationships that were not of you, Father. May they forgive themselves for that, Father, and let that just be in their past in the name of Jesus. I decree over them that they are not damaged goods in the name of Jesus, Father. That they are not damaged goods in the name of Jesus. And Father, they will embrace a ministry of celibacy until you bring their correct mates to them in Jesus' name, Father. I decree that the mates that you will join with them, it will enhance their destiny, not prevent or stop it. I plead the blood of Jesus against the works of Satan that will try to prevent their ministry to come forth, that it will not be stopped. Their destiny shall not be disturbed in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that these marriages will be blessed as they come into the kingdom of God. And there will be a testimony unto you, Father. We just thank you for them. 
for the young women and the young men and those who have been married, that, Father, you will do a new thing in their lives in the name of Jesus, Father. That right now that they will be found peace, peace in serving you, God. Peace in walking out this time and learning who they are with Jesus. We thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name, and everyone say, amen. Say, I receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. I expect to have here testimonies for some of you young people. Um, I've heard a testimony one time how a gentleman was in an airport in another state. His wife passed by him, and God just said, that is going to be your wife. He never seen her again for two or three years, and she showed up and was moved into that state. And that was the very woman, when they met up again, was the woman that God showed him in the airport three years earlier. Amen. How about some Jesus love stories? Hallelujah. And now a married couple, if you guys come on forward. And if your spouse is not here for any reason, that's okay. You just come on. prophesy over each and every one of our marriages. First of all, I want you to declare that I have a rock star marriage. I'm at sitting at this altar. I'm at this altar with the, the intention of declaring my marriage is blessed. Let's declare that together. I'm at this altar declaring that my marriage is blessed. I have a rock star marriage. My marriage is whole. My marriage is healed. My marriage is blessed. My marriage is blissful. My marriage is joyful. My marriage is peaceful. I believe in my marriage. I restore my marriage by restoring my confidence in my mate. My mate is my spouse, but my spouse is also my mate. My helpmate, my lover, my person that God has given me. Now God, I speak to my marriage and I receive this prayer that's getting ready to happen over my marriage. Now, God, I just thank you right now that these people that are here at the altar have a marriage that will be considered rock star status. Their marriage is on high. God, heal the fissures in their marriages. Be repairers of the breach in their marriages. Restore the years that the, the different type of animals had taken away, different type of insects have taken away. God, we just thank you for these marriages. We thank you for their finances. We thank you for their physical body. We thank you for their emotional body. We thank you for their mental body. We thank you, God, that their marriages are whole in all areas. We reject the premise that more divorces happen inside the body of Christ than they do outside. These marriages will last the test of time. We thank you for the older couples. We thank you for the younger couples. We thank you for the newlyweds. But God, let everybody feel that new excitement the first time they saw their bride walking down the aisle. Let the tears of joy weep every day. Let the spouses, the, the, the husbands and the wives be thanking God every morning and every night for their couple. God, we just bless you. 
for these rock star marriages. We bless you because they're going to water their bamboo. God, we just thank you. Minister to them. Bless them. Strengthen them. Let them be the declaration of healing. Let them be the declaration of financial increase. Let them be the de declaration of joy. Let them be the declaration of peace. Let them be an example that you hold up that marriages that made it. And we thank you, God. And we bless you for these marriages. In Jesus' name.